Are you ready for this? It's something we've been waiting for for a very long time. Come join me downstairs and take a look. Oh, it's dark down here. Take a look in here. Not that one. You! There's babies! Just about everywhere you look, there's baby garter snakes. They've even made it, like, up here in the branches. Like, how did you climb up all the way? Sorry, sorry. Look, they're even in the lips of the cave. This larger albino checkered garter is the mom, the proud mom. Her name is Fatness Everdeen, in case you don't know already. Here you are, sweetie. Yeah, you just want food. No, I'm not giving you credit for these babies. She gave birth, usually she gives birth inside of her humidity box, but this time she gave birth, I think, underneath it. See how wet it is down there? Oh, there's a baby right there, actually. And, huh, I saw the face of a different one. There you are. Hey, cutie. No, I'm not feeding you either right now. Go away. I don't have food. They all have one thing on their mind right now. You can hardly tell it's feeding night. So just like with the clutch of garter snakes we had earlier this year, we are going to tear apart the tank essentially. This is a nice excuse to clean out the entire tank's bedding, to go through it all bit by bit, to find every single baby and we'll see how many we have. No, no, I don't have food. Just, just stop that. You ate earlier today, actually. You have no excuse to be hungry. Here's our California red-sided. She's getting along with everyone and she's looking awesome. Now with garter snakes, they will hide in every nook and cranny. So we have to look in every possible little notch that they could wedge themselves into to make sure we don't miss anything. There you are. I knew you'd be hiding under there. Hi cuties. one. Oh, there you are. I knew there was one more adult in here. This is Prius, our hybrid garter snake. Come here. Hey, yeah, you're not a baby. Here, you go with all the other ladies. I always forget how small they are when they first are born. Oop. <laughs> Where did you go? They disappeared. Oh, oh here's a stillborn. Aww. Yep. Yep, looks like we have one stillborn. There's something moving in here. <gasps> there you are. Aww. So itty bitty. Go with your brothers and sisters for now. <laughs> what is happening? <gasps> How'd you sneak over there? Oh, you're a teeny one. Oh. We have one here that's a runt. So, and this one's actually already shedding. Garter snakes will shed pretty soon, like almost, almost immediately after they're born. And since he's already he's shedding, yeah, you are active, but you're so tiny. You're about half the size of, of the others. So the runt might not make it, but we're going to soak him to help him get the uh, shed off. And we'll see what happens. Oh, yep, wait. And you're gone. Come back. No. You tried to escape. Nice try. Oh. Well, he's on your side now. Got another. Two of them now. I've decided they need a little more room because there's so many of them. So we are upgrading for the time being. Now we're putting the adults back in. Here, first off, is Proud Mama. Here you go, Fatness. Here, you can go on your basking platform. Here's our California Red going back in, straight to the bottom. 
This is our ribbon snake slash plains garter snake hybrid named Prius, of course. You're free and right in the tube. Next is our other albino checker garter snake with a beautiful yellow stripe down her back. Can't wait till she's big enough to breed. And finally, this is a common garter snake. This is Twiggy. She's the garter snake in here that I've had the longest, actually. She goes to programs with me. Now they get to explore their environment as if it's a new home. Guys, it's the same stuff. It's just clean and kind of in a slightly different position. It doesn't smell like us anymore. Here are a couple of the baby bins that I'll be setting up for the baby garter snakes, and they slide right into a baby rack, which I'll show you after this. Even though I use aspen fibers for adult snakes, I tend to use or I prefer paper towels as bedding, not only because it fits well so it's easy to clean for the babies, but I can also monitor their droppings a little bit better, and I can feed them a little easier, because since they're small and they're kind of nervous, they're slithering all around, I just take food and I drop it or lay it on the paper towel, and or I can tweezer feed them, and then if they pull it away from the tweezers, it's okay if they drag it in the substrate. It won't stick to anything because it's just paper towels. So these make feeding a little bit easier for the baby snakes. But when they get older, I would recommend that they move to aspen fibers. I also add rocks into the baby enclosures because then as they shed, they can brush up against the side of the rock and the uh, rough texture will help that shed skin come right off. Then we have water dishes, of course, and for enrichment, some leafy things, some twigs, just, just things for them to climb on because garter snakes love to explore. And this foliage also kind of makes them feel a little bit more secure in their new surroundings. So this is the uh, type of habitats that I'll have put together. More than just these two, of course, but I'll put several in each because they actually do eat better if they're housed with their siblings rather than being housed alone. Now is the fun part where we get to add the little babies into their new little enclosures. See what they think. Where are you going to go? Yep, behind the cave? They usually go behind the cave. Now that we have a couple of the baby enclosures set up, let's put them into the rack. Here is the baby snake rack. The top half is a bunch of bull snakes that we just recently hatched. Those are Mr. and Mrs. Wilson's babies. Cheyenne, of course, thinks she's part of the conversation. And the bottom three slots are what we're going to use for the garters, because as you see when I when we slide these in, there is a little bit of a gap right above the, where the bin slides in, and just that would even be enough for garter snakes to sneak out of. But the bottom shelf, and this happens with a lot of racks, the bottom shelf has the least amount of a gap because the weight is kind of pushing down this shelf, and so this fits in nice and flush, so there's no chance of them escaping. Wow, can you believe it? 29 babies. That's incredible. All from one mom. Now she was big, but we weren't expecting 29. That's just crazy. The babies are set up in their little mini baby enclosures for now, and that's where they'll remain communally until they go to their new homes. We'll offer food to these guys in about a week because it takes about that long for them to absorb the remaining yolk inside of their bodies, so they won't have any interest in food until that's absorbed. And then once they're eating regularly, whether it be worms or mouse tails or feet or fish pieces, then they will be ready for their new homes. There's a bit of a waiting list on these guys, but because of how many babies Fatness had, I think if you're on the waiting list right now, you should be in the clear. If we have extras after we go through our waiting list, I will be putting these on the Available Reptiles tab on our website, which is just snakediscovery.com. So if you're interested in an albino baby garter snake, please keep an eye on that page on the website. Garter snakes are one of the most underrated species of snakes out there in the pet world. I think they make excellent pet snakes because they're very curious, they eat just about anything, they don't get very large, and they come in all sorts of colors. Not to mention, you can house them together like we do behind us. You can house not only the same species of garter snake together, but different species in the same enclosure. If you do this though, make sure that you house only the same sex in the same enclosure because you don't want accidental clutches of baby snakes. I mean, if you want to breed garter snakes, then go for it. But if you're housing different species together like we do, we definitely recommend housing the genders or sexes separately. Because if you end up with hybrid babies, sometimes those are sterile. Whether the babies themselves are sterile or whether the mother becomes gravid and develops babies goes through the entire process, which is very labor intensive on the snake, and then gives birth to stillborn babies. That sometimes happens too with hybrids. So we recommend not hybridizing garter snakes because of those issues that you can get with sterilization. 
But again, with housing them together, we have found that doing so with garter snakes makes them calmer, it makes them easier to handle, makes them better eaters, and I think that's all due to the fact that they're just used to having other beings around them. They're not completely isolated from everything else, both snakes and humans. By having these together, we actually um, added the California red sided in the tank, and when we first got her, she was a spaz. She would musk, she would strike at us, she would... Uh, act all defensive constantly and she'd whip around when we tried to hold her and after her quarantine That's why she was being housed on her own after quarantine We added her to the group of ladies in the tank behind me and within a couple of weeks She calmed right down now we can handle her and she doesn't hiss or strike. She doesn't musk anymore It's fantastic and she's a good eater now too. I think the biggest reason why garter snakes will calm down so much if they're housed communally is because they're constantly rubbing up against each other like in the basking area or wherever it happens to be inside of the tank and they just get used to that constant touching and so when a human touches them it's not that big of a deal anymore. The one drawback to garter snakes is, yeah, they can musk a little bit, but with regular handling, they, again, calm right down. Babies can also be really squirmy at first, so you have to be patient with them. As they age, they typically slow down, like this one is a really good size to handle right now. But overall, they are amazing pet snakes. So if you're looking for something unique to add to your collection, or you're just looking for a starter, a good beginner snake, we'd recommend garter snakes. A pretty cool thing about garter snakes is they give live birth. There's no eggs involved at all. About 70% of snakes lay eggs and the remaining 30% give live birth like the garters. Well, it's been a couple of weeks since the babies were born, so I figured I'd give you a little update. Basically, now I'm just trying to get them to eat their first meals, and once they do, I move them to this container. And these are my babies who are eating and ready, they'll be ready first for their new homes. And their food that I've been offering is worm pieces. I'm also giving them feet and tails of mice. You know, when you buy a bag of fuzzies or pinkies, there's always those pieces at the bottom of the bag. These guys love to eat those. What are you going to eat? First meal. Come on. Looks tasty. The babies like how the worms move catches their eye. They love how they smell. So this is a great baby food for garter snakes. The worms are not a complete diet though, so that's why I try to get them to eat other things too. Oh, look at you. Nice. Ravenous little baby. Go, oh, take it down. That's all you. Sweet. There he goes. First meal. All right. Now that you have eaten, you can go in here. Promotion. Good job, buddy. So that's basically what I'm doing with the remaining babies until they all eat and then as they eat regularly they go to their new homes and let's check in on the runt though. The runt is in here. This one has not eaten its first meal yet but look it looks great. I don't fill the water dish every day because sometimes he'll put this corner like somehow in the water dish and it soaks it all up and I don't want the humidity to, to get too high so I just fill it every couple of days. Hey buddy. I also feed him after the water dish has dried because sometimes that makes them more likely to eat their food if they're a little bit thirsty. So let's see if little Runt will eat. Hey buddy. Oh, come back. I would love it if you wanted to eat. Oh, you are so little. I mean, look, look at how little he is. Oh my gosh. All right. Let's feed you this. This would be the perfect size for you. Can you eat it? Oh, it touched you. I'm sorry. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. Yep. Go, go get it. You got this. All right. Little runt is eating. That is so exciting. Good job, little dude. I'm proud of you. He might actually have a good chance then in that case. Because he already pooped once, so that shows that things are passing through. My camera doesn't want to focus on him because he's so tiny. And he's eating! That is great! Now, I know a lot of you will, of course, be interested in the run to I'm just going to give away free to a good home. But I do have a home already lined up for him, so I'm sorry. But I promise he will be very well taken care of in his new home. I'm sorry, I'm trying to focus on him, but you are just so doggone tiny that my phone does not want to focus on you. But that is great to see. Oh, I'm so glad that he's eating. Fantastic. And that actually was his first meal, too. 
Anyway, wish us luck with feeding 29 baby garter snakes plus uh, 18 baby bull snakes, and we have seven, 27 more bull snakes due to hatch in the next couple of weeks. Wish us luck, and we'll see you next time.